Well, now we are proceeding with uh, some examples of the radioactivity. Uh, we have to apply them in the different questions. Like in this question, a neutron, that is neutral particle, a proton, a positively charged particle, an electron, a negatively charged particle, and a particle enter perpendicular uniform magnetic field with the same uniform velocity. So, magnetic field is uniform and the velocity is constant. The path of electron in the following figure will be, now the figure is indicated, that is the deflections are indicated by number 1, number 2, number 3 and number 4. The crosses are indicating the uniform magnetic field there is magnetic field at all the points will be same and the lines with arrow are indicating the particles like neutron, proton, electron, etc. So we have to just explain the path of electron in the following figure. Like electron is having negligible mass, proton has mass which is much greater than electron one atomic mass unit that is 1.6 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms and neutron also has the same mass as that of proton now we find that uh, when the neutron will be projected in uniform magnetic field being it has no charge so magnetic field will not apply any force therefore neutron will not be deflected and if we take into consideration the proton, its mass is more, so deflection will be less and for electron the mass is uh, negligibly small, so the curve of deflection will be greater. So we come to the solution now. Electron is negatively charged particle, hence it will be deflected towards right. So it is deflected towards right, number one, and other is that it's uh, path of deflection will be more curved, bending will be more. Now we come to the another example. In a radioactive decay of an element, it is found that the count rate reduces from 1024 to 128 in 3 minutes. So in 3 minutes, 1024 count reduces to 128 count. Uh, Normally the point to remember is, for this we use GM counter, the giger muller counter for counting the particles. Half-life we have to find. So radioactive decay of an element is found to have a count rate reduced from 1024 to 128. So what should be the half-life of that particular radioactive sample? In order to solve this question, we use the general equation of radioactivity and time is calculated by function t log n naught over n divided by log 2. n naught means original number of radioactive atoms at t is equal to 0. n is the number of radioactive atoms at time t and we will always remember that n naught atoms exist at t is equal to 0 and n atoms exist in t greater than 0. Now for log 2 we can put up the value or we can cancel off in the calculation. So for time t we will compute the value of time that is 3 minutes and log 1024 divided by 128. We can use the formula of the log that is log m over log n is equal to log m minus log n. So, T log 1024 over 128 divided by log 2. So, we compute the values and log 2 is cancelled off and uh, we will get the value of capital T that is half life. It is found to be 1 minute. Now, we come towards the next example. The half life of a radioactive isotope is 3 days. Now, here half life is given 3 days. In how many days? will its activity reduce to 1 over 16 of its initial value. So if 
uh, earlier the activity is A, then finally it will become over 16. So how in how much time A will convert to A by 16 um, and the half-life of the isotope is 3 days. So to solve this question, we proceed with again the general formula that is T half is 3 days given. You must also know that uh, uh, half-life is basically average life divided by 1.44 or we will say that average life is 1.44 times the half-life period. Now the general formula will be n is equal to n naught by 2 to the power 4 then we will write n naught as it is and we will write 2 to the power n. Now the bases are same on both sides the exponents must be equal. This is a mathematical relation, so n will be equal to 4. Now we will apply the formula, that is t is equal to n times of t half. So n is taken as 4, as we have calculated, and t half is 3. So the time will be 12 days, that is in 12 days, we will find uh, the activity will drop to 1 over 16 of its initial value. Now for the another example, the count rate. Every time when we use the count rate, we are referring to Giger Muller counter, GM counter. Uh, and the Wilson cloud chamber only detects the charge particle, whereas count rate is recorded with the help of GM counter. The count rate of the radioactive source at T0 to 0 was 1600 counts per second. At T0 to 8 seconds, it was 100 counts per second. So, when the decay have not started, the count was 1600 per second and when the decay started after 8 seconds, 1600 is reduced to 100 counts per second. The count rate in counts at T0 to 6 seconds will be how much? We have to apply again a general formula of the radioactivity that is small d that is the time that is equal to t log and not over n divided by log 2. Then the values are given to us for small t we will put 8 and initial count is n naught so it is 1600. Final count is 100 so for n we will compute 100 that is divided by log 2 and we will get the net result that is log 2 to log t that is t multiplied by log 16 over log 2. Log 16 can be written as log 2 to the power 4 and uh, it will be written as 4 log 2. So log 2 will cancel off and we will find it will become 4 t is equal to 8 and t will be equal to 2. So when t will be 2, 2 seconds, the number of counts in 2 seconds will be 200 counts as according to the question. Now for the next example, a radioactive element with mass 8 grams and half-life 100 seconds after 5 minutes will reduce to how much? Now here the amount is given, that is amount initially is 8 grams, half-life is 100 seconds and after 5 minutes 5 minutes means after 300 seconds, it will reduce to how much amount? We know that n is equal to n naught e to the power minus lambda t. This can also be written in terms of mass that is m is equal to m naught e to the power minus lambda t. Using this principle, we will get the value of amount. So m is equal to m naught over 2n as I have explained earlier in the formula. It will be m naught over 2 to the power 3 because 8 can be written in the form of an exponent. So we find that in the equation, bases are same in the denominator. So the exponents will be equal. So it will be n is equal to 3. m is equal to 8 by 8, that is 1 gram. So n is 3 and amount is given to us 8 grams. So 2 to the power 3 is 8, so it is 8 by 8 grams, that is 1 gram. 